Madam President. The South Carolina. Thank you very much. Um, I rise in support of moving forward on this legislation. I wish I could fix the Senate. Uh, it's not functioning the way any of us would like. Plenty of blame to go around. The Congress is at 15 percent. But here's some good news. There is a piece of legislation before us that if we could ever get a vote on the legislation would have an overwhelming bipartisan support that actually would matter to the average everyday person. When you look to your Congress, you've got to say, what is it about these folks up there? Why can't they do the things that all of us know need to be done? Now, there's a difference of opinion about how to deal with China. This is a complicated issue, but the one thing no one's telling me on the other side, Lindsay, they're not manipulating the currency. Uh, I think it's the American Taxpayers Union, great organization. I'm pretty good standing with them. I just di disagree with them on how to proceed against China in this particular instance. I think they said in their own letter, we agree China manipulates their currency. Well, if they do manipulate their currency, what does it matter? It matters a lot if you're an American business man or woman trying to compete in the world marketplace. As Senator Schumer said, the Chinese manipulate the value of their currency. It's 6.3 yuan to the dollar. It used to be 8 point something. What does that mean? That means if a product produced in China is sold in the world marketplace and you're in business in South Carolina, Alabama, or New York competing with that Chinese company, the value of their money bills a discount to 30 to 40 percent, and you're going to have a very hard time winning in the marketplace. Not because you don't work hard, not because your employees are inferior, simply because the Chinese government is doing things with our currency we don't do. Now, we have a Federal Reserve. Some of their policies I don't agree with, but to suggest that our Federal Reserve system manipulates our currency to create a trade advantage is ridiculous. If we're doing it for that purpose, everybody should be fired because we have a $273 billion trade deficit. Every country has a right to set monetary policy. That's not the issue. If you disagree with the way we're doing monetary policy in the United States, I think you have a valid claim. This is about a country manipulating their currency for an advantage in the export market. The Chinese manipulation of the yuan has cost this country at least 2 million jobs, 41,000 in South Carolina, and it is an unfair trade practice in another name. If this were an island nation somewhere, none of us would care, but this is the second or third largest economy in the world, and all of us should care. The people who are opposing this legislation today are probably doing business in China, and they're afraid to offend the Chinese. I've got some manufacturing in my state that has a big footprint in China, and they're nervous about this bill. I have most people in my state dying for me to get them some relief so they can stay in business. But here's a warning. It will come, this movie will come to a neighborhood near you soon. In 2016, the Chinese are going to start producing in large numbers uh, commercial aircraft. It will be difficult for American aircraft companies to compete with China if the aircraft is 30 percent discounted because of currency manipulation. One day they'll be producing cars, not to be sold in China, but throughout the world. If you're in a high-tech industry, what has happened to the textile industry and other elements of our economy like steel is coming towards you. And all we ask of China is build cars, build airplanes, but sell your product based on trade practices that are accepted throughout the world. Don't manipulate your currency to create a discount on products made in your country at our expense. Now, since 2004, I've been dealing with this. We started with a sense of the Senate because everybody says this is delicate. I buy into that to a point. So sense of the Senate, we all agreed like 100 votes. You manipulate your currency, please stop. In 2005, after they didn't stop, we introduced legislation, got 67 votes to, to proceed forward with the 27.5% tariff. We stopped our bill because we hoped things would change. And guess what? The wines appreciated about 31% since we've been doing this exercise, but not nearly enough. There's a restriction on the wine trading. It can't float more than 0.5% a day. It's tied to the dollar, and it's still crushing our manufacturing community unfairly. So from 2004 to now, I've been reasonable. I've sent message amendments. I've taken votes where I won overwhelmingly and backed off. I've had it. Enough is enough. 
I am sorry the amendment process around this place is so screwed up. It is. There was an effort to get some amendments up, not as much as people on our side would like. Uh, I hate the idea of filling up the tree and becoming the House. But this is not about Senate procedure for me. I try to be a team player where I can be because I do believe you know, Senator McConnell's doing a very good job. Senator Reid's got his own agenda. It's not about Harry Reid. It's not about Mitch McConnell. It's not about some rule of the Senate. It's about people in my state who are going to lose their job if we don't do something. So I know what I need to be doing as a senator here. The institution I need to be protecting is the American workforce who is having their clock cleaned by a communist dictatorship who cheats. They don't outwork us. They don't outperform us. They steal our intellectual property. They manipulate their currency. They subsidize their industries. A few years ago, they dumped steel all over the world in the American marketplace in particular, produced in China below cost, and the Bush administration pushed back with a countervailing duty claim. I want to do business with China. The Chinese people are good. Their government is bad. They're mercantilists. They look at every transaction from an eye of what is best for us in the short term. They don't play by the rules. Since they've been in the WTO, the trade deficit has almost quadrupled. So enough is enough for Lindsey Graham. We're going to have a chance after seven years of getting a vote that will matter to the American people. And I'm sorry we're mad at each other all the time about everything. I am tired of being mad about the Senate not working well. I am going to set aside my displeasure for the process and do something I think will help the people that I represent. I'm going to vote to move forward in an imperfect procedural environment, knowing that if we can ever get a vote, it will be the best thing that could happen to the American manufacturing community. It would be a shot across China's bow that's long overdue. And the last thing I would say that Senator Sessions has come into this issue. He has brought an intellectual weight to it, emotional commitment. He understands the middle class. And Jeff Sessions has been the best partner anyone could hope to have try to push a bill forward that will give America a fighting chance in a world economy dominated by a communist dictatorship unfairly. So I just want to recognize what Jeff has done. He's going to vote to move forward. We've had it with China. Let's do something that will matter. With that, I yield.